The foundation for a balanced success are honesty, character, integrity, faith, love, and loyalty. And the following participant's actions always speak louder than a lion's roar. He never fails at anything because a man that loves and supports his family is the true definition of a success story. Perhaps it's those that strive to be of value and not succeed in the old-fashioned way. Success, guys and gals. What is success? Maybe those that realize happiness is the key to success, not the other way around. Well, the latter epitomizes our third participant. He's class personified and a man of integrity, virtue, and honor. He was born in 58 and began a journey that would solidify his status as one of the very best. As an adult, they would appreciate his excellence from the Midwest to Budapest, as he would be hard-pressed to suggest that there is one country on planet Earth that missed out on experiencing this man's excellence as we were all there to invest. But first, let's go back to the very beginning of his quest. His father showed him how to punt, pass, and kick. As an eight-year-old, he would win quite the contest. He won a punt and pass contest and went to the semis and competed in halftime of two pro games. The Eagles and Steelers followed by the Cowboys and Redskins. There were 15 kids remaining and he beat every one, much to all of their chagrins. He won again when he was 12 and later on he threw a football for 65 yards. He was a three-sport athlete with many options, but fate would step in to reveal its cards. He attended Newark Valley High School and Newark Valley, New York and he transferred to Owego Free Academy, where he led her in wrestling and football. He excelled rapidly and drew many top recruiters who definitely had the wherewithal. He participated in amateur wrestling, becoming a sectional champion in the 215-pound class in 1976 and the New York State Championships. He was incredible, and he placed fourth. And many moons later, he became one of the top stars at the biggest pro wrestling promotion, which happened to be up north. After graduating from high school, he attended one of the finest sports universities in the country, I'm talking about Syracuse, not to be confused with a city in Sicily, which many would deduce dedicates a temple to the greed god Zeus. He competed in football and amateur wrestling, becoming Eastern Intercollegiate Wrestling Association champion in 1981 and becoming a letter winner in 77, 78, 79, and 81. Wow. And by the way, everyone, one of his recruiters, legendary Giants coach Tom Coughlin, who guided the Giants to two Super Bowl defeats of the Patriots. And as a New Yorker, that was a lot of fun. He played with legendary football players such as Joe Morris, Craig Wolfley, Jim Collins, and the great Art Monk. Years later, he'd be involved in a hot feud with the legendary Dory Funk. One day, he met the legendary Destroyer after a wrestling banquet and was asked if he would be interested in going pro. He did. The Destroyer became his Mr. Miyagi, but he needed to make some dough. So what do you know? He was off to Germany as promoter Mr. Squinkovich paid him 400 bucks to participate in the show. He wrestled in Canada, and next was Mid-Atlantic, as Wahoo McDaniel liked his strong amateur background. Within six months, he won the TV title as he would assent and astound as pound for pound. He was impactful as a Wilt Chamberlain rebound. Next up was New York, where he quickly won tag gold. But behold, his tag partner, Barry Windham's sister, Stephanie, would meet him, surrounded by the backdrop of many a cheer as he was excelling during a fast rising period in his career. They would end up married within half a year. This man's resume is mind blowing. So let's take a moment and talk shop. One-time Eastern Intercollegiate Wrestling Association Heavyweight Champion. Three-time NWA Florida Heavyweight Champion. Two-time NWA Southern Heavyweight Champion. Four-time NWA U.S. Tag Team Champion. One-time NWA World Tag Team Champion. Three-time NWA World Television Champion. One-time NWA Canadian Television Champion. Five-time WWF Tag Team Champion. George Tragos Luthes Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame. Ranked number 26 in PWI 594. One-time Slammy Award winner. The man provides the masses with memories, with victories and defeats. But you better organize all of your receipts because from 91 to 95, one thing he wouldn't tolerate were any tax cheats. That's right. He added many authentic layers to one of the most iconic wrestling characters of all time. I'm speaking of IRS. But despite locker rooms and human games of chess, this man would never stress because he did it all for his family as his work would continue to impress. Multiple stints with Ted Turner's WCW in a career that would, in May, it would end in May of 2004. Whether it was in the States or in Japan, the fans wanted more and asked for an encore, but he gave them his all while reminding us what he will always stand for. In about 30 seconds, you'll leap from your seats as you definitely will applaud a man that is so easy to like. So give it up for a real, kind, humble, intelligent human being. Last name, Rotunda. First name, Mike. Mike, welcome to the TK Celebrity Tournament, my friend. Thank you, Avi. You definitely have skill, my friend. No. <laughs> uh, that, that was an awesome introduction and I appreciate it. Um, it's great to be here uh, with all your other guests and and hopefully uh, our guests that 
is supposed to be here on the show can make it as well with his tech difficulties. And uh, I want to say hi to our judges, to Magnum, Mark Henry, and Jock. It's nice to meet Jock. I know Mark Henry and and um, Terry Allen from way back. Actually, I produced quite a few Mark Henry matches uh, when I was producing with WWE. So it's good to see you guys, and it's great to be here. Wow. Uh, guys and gals and pals, Mike Rotunda. And, you know, it's typical of you to always give people roses because you deserve yours too. And really, getting to know you over the past couple of weeks and month, uh, you do kind of what I do. You deflect. Someone throws something nice at you. You make it about them. You put people uh, in a comfortable situation where you're always making them smile, my friend. And uh, that's wholehearted. Mike, I got to ask you the golden question. I know you've been to Greece. I know you liked it there. Uh, pride in the prize, becoming the one sole person to win this entire thing that thus far has 97 Hall of Famers, Oscar, Emmy, Tony, Grammy, Golden Globe, Olympians, all in this entire tournament. Are you here to win the entire thing, my friend? I'll just say this, Abby. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I love it. I love it, guys and gals. Mike Rotunda's in the house. Locker room co-star, because as far as film genres goes, the buddy comedy, which is almost as old as the medium itself, it's consistently entertained audiences as a straightforward and fun way to examine friendships and bonding. And with their beginnings in American cinema, Comedic duos like Laurel and Hardy, Abbott and Costello, uh, they were early definers of the genre success. But through the decades, we saw other partners like Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis. But since the 70s, the buddy comedy has gone beyond straight genre formula. It incorporates elements of road movies, action films. Think uh, Silver Streak with Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder. Think Rush Hour, Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Think Thelma and Louise, Gina Davis and Susan Sarandon. There's something that happens when we start to align fiction and reality. We don't just create good examples of bonding. We give room to unheard voices. Okay. You know, you went over my background, Avi, with all the great people I got to uh, play ball with and wrestle with. And um, I'd like to throw in there uh, Gronk's dad, Gordy Gronkowski, as well. He was my roommate during football camp. Uh, I believe it was my sophomore year, and he was a freshman. So I got to know him and later got to produce um uh, a match that uh, Gronk was involved in with WWE. Um, and I had a unique situation because of wrestling. I also played baseball in high school and it was probably my best sport. But anyways, I, I had a unique thing, you know, having to be with so many different types of athletes as far as football players or wrestling or baseball teams. And I can tell you this, it was always the craziest things you ever did when you were in a wrestling, you know, on, on a wrestling road trip or whatever. Wrestlers are just a different breed within themselves. And um, one of the guys that um, I really think that, that was uh, funny and we had a lot of great times together. And it's interesting also because you're spending 200, 250 days a year on the road if you're teamed with somebody you know, all over the place and the flying, driving, whatever. I, I can remember um, the guy that I, that I was thinking about would be make a good comedy movie is the guy by the name of Rick Steiner, who was a Michigan All-American wrestler. His brother was an All-American, Scott Steiner as well with Michigan. And we had a team in WCW called the Varsity Club. So it was kind of a unique thing also because normally in the wrestling business, if you had an amateur background, you would be a baby face, a good guy, and you'd do the all-American type thing. And Dusty Rhodes put it together for us, and, and we were heels. We were, we were the bad guys. And it was so easy to get heat because everybody, you know, is affiliated with where they live and their university. And you would basically say, you know, that if you're in Southern California, you know, USC is a great school, but I went to a real university being Syracuse University, where you actually had to learn how to read and write. So right away, they, they'd hate you, you know, so it was easy. But I had a lot of interesting uh, road trips with Steiner. I'll give you an example. One day we were in the, the Washington, D.C. area, and we were in like four o'clock traffic, six lanes of traffic. And we're driving along, and his brother, Scott, 
uh, Steiner, Rick's brother, was in the back, and he was real into bodybuilding, so he basically ate chicken all the time and, and <clears throat> green apples and slut, basically, on the way to the, the wrestling match. So we're driving down the road, and I'm kind of in the middle of, say, five or six lanes of traffic. Just everybody's going pretty good, but there's nowhere to wiggle to get over to the left or right. And Steiner looks up on the dash, and I had some of those, like, dehydrated, sun-kissed raisins that are, like, dried out in the red packages. And, and Rick goes, hey, can I have some of those raisins? And I said, yeah, I don't care. So, of course, he takes the two boxes of the raisins, rips the top off the raisins, and goes, <clears throat> and shovel, shovels them down his throat. So we're driving along, and all of a sudden he starts <clears throat> you know making all these noises and i go you okay steiner and he's like doing it again <clears throat> getting worse and i go i don't know if i can get over to the side are you choking and and uh he started choking worse and finally scott steiner his brother sits up and he goes what's the matter and i said your brother's choking on the raisins <laughs> and scott goes well take him away from him I'm like, are you kidding me? This is like I'm something out of Dumb and Dumber, you know? And I mean, there is always these situations like that with, you know, being on the road as much as we were, they were countless. So my idea would be if I was going to do a, like a ride along type movie to do a lot of different stuff like that. And, you know, stuff that a lot of it actually happened. And, and call it Varsity Club Hits the Road, starring Rick Steiner and myself. You've set the coordinates. The old DeLorean from Back to the Future is ready to go. You know where you're going. You know when you're going to. But here's the catch. You're already in history. You're somewhere in the past, anywhere. Which historical figure would you like to have a company to visit someone who's no longer alive in present time? Who will you both be visiting? When and why? There's always historical figures around us. And in this case, they're right there in the physical sense. Mike and Dan will select one historical figure to accompany them on a very important voyage. They will be visiting someone that meant a lot to them at any point in their life. They could be visiting a father, friend, brother, child, uncle, grandparent, teacher, anyone. They could be visiting them when they were children, adults. They have the time machine, Mike and Dan. Which historical figure accompanies you on this trip? Why did you select them? And B, who, where, and when will the two of you be visiting? And why? At what point in your life? You'll have as much time as you would like. This may be get a little emotional for me. I would go back in the time when Jesus Christ was being crucified. And first of all, I would try to help him in any way possibly that I could. And I would ask him to come with me back to early 2023 to save my son's life. If he possibly could tell me anything I could have done or our family could have done to save my 36 year old son from passing away of a heart attack and like i said it's 2023 was a and i hate to be a downer but 2023 for myself and our whole family was i lost my mom 86 years old i was up in new york and she had a stroke and was in a nursing home for two and a half months and three months. And she passed away in the nursing home. A week later, we lost Wyndham, Bray Wyatt, the fiend. And, you know, some people, if you're not a Christian, might go, ah, that, that's never going to happen. But to me, it's worth being a Christian to hopefully one day 
that's the art done again. And that's it. When does silence convey more meaning than words? Whenever you are ready, my friend. This was the easiest one for me, Avi. When I'm in the middle of an argument with my wife, I haven't won an argument in 40 years. <laughs> That's the time to shut up. You have, you have to know. You have to know when to hold them, when to fold them. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I'm still trying to learn that myself, by the way. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I'm trying to learn that. <laughs>